Hi, Cal friends and family. We are picking up in our first Peter series. Today we have chapter 3, verses 8 through 22. I don't know about you all, but my translation um, has it labeled suffering for doing good. I think that that is such a good conversation for all of us as Christians to have. As a family, as friends, what does it look like to handle suffering when we do good? Now, we, um, Allie Noble is going to speak to us today on how God spoke through this passage to her. But before we do that, let's um, take a moment to read God's word. We know that God is continually speaking to us, that God's word is alive and active. And so wherever you are, let's read these words together, either with this video or if you are gathered as a family or in friends, take a moment to read chapter 3, verses 8 through 22 together. Finally, all of you, be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing, because to this you are called so that you may inherit a blessing. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. They must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. For it is better, if it is God's will, to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteousness for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. After being made alive, he went and made proclamation to the imprisoned spirits, to those who were disobedient long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. In it, only a few people, eight in all, were saved through the water. And this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also. Not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience to, toward God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at God's right hand, with angels, authorities, and powers in submission to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, friends, as we have each week of this series, we want to give you a chance to pause the video in just a moment and have meaningful conversation with the people you are with. And so if you are with your family, we want to, in just a moment, put questions on the screen and you can pause the video, talk through those questions, ask each other, what is God speaking to us through this passage. If you're by yourself, we know that we are never alone. You are in the presence of God. Still pause the video, take a moment, be still, talk to God and say, God, what do you want me to learn from this? And maybe it might mean that you have to read that passage again. That's okay. Um, and after that time of conversation, my friend Allie is going to come back and share a few thoughts of what God spoke to her from this passage.
Hi friends, I am excited to talk to you about this passage in 1 Peter 3. Um, I'm coming to you from my garden, so you're probably hearing some birds that are chirping. And uh, I'm coming to you from the garden not only because it's a place that I love to be, um, but also because in reading this passage, I think there are a lot of things um, that are similar and things that we can take as an analogy from being in the garden. Um, there are three main things that I uh, took away and that I want to share with you as you are thinking about this passage. Um, it talks a lot about doing good and rejecting evil. Um, some of the things that it says to do that are good is love others, be humble, and be respectful, and honor God's authority. Now those are things that we have all heard before, but it also tells us to actively reject evil, things like insults or speaking evil and not obeying what God tells us to do. Something that I have learned um, in life and in gardening is that doing good is a choice. When you are working in a garden, um, you need to do some good. You need to plant some beautiful flowers and plant some pretty plants. But you also need to remove some weeds. Now we have so many weeds in our yard and it is something that we have intentionally needed to do. The people who lived here before us long, long ago, they, uh, it's clear that there are remnants of a beautiful garden. You see this little path and these things and this bench that they had out. There are things that are proof that at one point, this garden was well taken care of. But over the years, it was clear that no one took care of it. No one really spent any time making it look beautiful. So when we moved in a year ago, there were so many weeds. There were so many parts that were a jungle and we were discovering so many things. And so now that we live there, we have had to intentionally remove the weeds, intentionally take out the things that are bad and put in things that are beautiful. When we have to do good in our life and do things for God, it's not just something we decide once and then and we're just good for the rest of our lives. Just because we're a Christian, just because we go to church or live stream church, just because we read our Bible does not automatically mean that we are gonna do good. We need to make the choice to do good. That's the first thing, doing good is a choice. The second thing that we've learned from this passage is that, is that doing good is something that we need to do on a daily basis. And if we wanna reject evil, we need to do that on a daily basis. We don't wake up in the morning, say, we're gonna do good and then the whole rest of our day is all good. And then the next day is the same. We need to constantly be making decisions to follow Jesus to do what is right, to love the people around us and reject the things that he says are not good, like the things in this passage. That's the same with gardening. You can't just pull all the weeds one time and then they're gone forever. I am out here almost every day picking little weeds and things that are coming up from the ground that are not supposed to be there. I see little thorny things everywhere and just for about 10 minutes a day, I just get on my knees and I pluck those things. Doing good and rejecting evil are things that we need to do constantly. First Peter, it says that turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work to maintain it. We need to maintain this life, the light of Jesus that is in our lives every single day. It's not just one decision. So that's number two, is doing good is a daily, daily decision. And finally, possibly the most important thing that we have learned um, towards the end of this passage is why we do this. Why do we do good? It's not just to check off something. It's because Jesus has given us this one life. Jesus died on the cross for you and for me and shared his love so greatly. And because of that, that is why we want to do good. And that is why we want to reject evil. To compare it to our garden, Steve and I moved into this house a year ago, and that was such a gift. 
We do not deserve this house. We do not deserve this beautiful creation that God has given us. So we work to make it beautiful and maintain it because it is what God has provided. We are being good stewards of this land and of His creation. So as you think about this passage today and through the rest of your week, and hopefully for longer than that, remember those three things. Doing good and rejecting evil is a choice. You have to choose to do it, and you can choose to do it today. Two, it is something that you need to do every single day. You can't expect yourself to just remember on your own. We need to choose to do it every day. And also, finally, remember why we are called to do good. It's because God loves us, not because he is making us and wants us to check off this list, but because he has given you this one life to love him and love his people. And so in that is why we want to do good. Let me just pray for us before we go. God, we thank you for this life that you have given us. We thank you for your word and your encouragement to do good, to love the people around you. And God, we know that as our situation looks very different right now in isolation, we know that that is not prohibiting us from doing good. God, I pray that you show all of the people watching right now who can hear my voice. Pray that you show all of us ways that we can do good and love people in your name. And it's in your precious name we pray. Amen. Have a good week, everyone.